so we got all our lumber sitting here that needs to be cut. We need six 34 inch legs and then we need two 24 inch three by ones for the trim. And then we're gonna use whatever's extra for uh, like stabilization and stuff. So these has to be 34 inch. two pencils so we got a bunch of cool weathered board from home depot like some of them are pretty dark and other ones are lighter we're gonna cut them into little like foot and foot and a half pieces and then we're gonna like stack them up on the sides to have a trim for their, before we pour the resin and hopefully it turns out really nice Literally sitting crisscross out this wall. So we got six of these three by two. I think we come to 34 inch, right? 34 inches for the legs of the table. And then we have two 24 inch three by ones to frame the table. And then we have two eight foot three by ones frame the outside of the table and we have all of these are weathered wood cut down to one foot and one and a half foot lengths so that we're going to line this and then we have our two four by two lengths to make a full eight foot long table then we're going to line it with bottle caps in a really cool design and then we're going to finish it by pouring resin also full disclosure i've done a couple tiny little woodworking things so this is by far like overreaching for my um, skills, woodworking <laughs> abilities. <laughs> so if I do anything wrong or mess up, please don't judge me too hard. So we're starting to assemble the table. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit high. We started building the table by balancing the first set of legs under one end of the plywood with the other end resting on the ping pong table with a couple blocks underneath, making it even with the height of the first set of legs. From there, we added the second piece of plywood by balancing both plywood pieces half and half on the second legs of the table. Once the second legs were secured to both pieces of plywood, we scooted the table off of the support of the ping pong table and balanced the last set of legs underneath the plywood and secured it. From there, we would use wood glue to attach the decorative trim to the table and a nail gun to secure them. The reason why we added the decorative trim first was because we wanted the surrounding trim to be flush with the decorative trim. We realized it would be much easier to add the decorative trim first and then hold up the surrounding trim, making sure it's flush and then screwing it on the table rather than adding the surrounding trim first and hoping it ended up flush. After this, we started attaching the surrounding trim of the table. We started with screws to secure the trim onto each leg and then used the nail gun to give us some added support. We did this with all sets of the trim around the whole table. As you guys can see, we finished the frame last night. So here's our trim right here. And we made it level with the uh, decorative trim. And then it creates a lip over here so that when I put all the bottle caps on and flood it, this trim will keep the resin from pouring over the sides. And then we're gonna do like in the little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like tiny little gaps and then like the joint in the middle of the table. I'm gonna put some kind of like foil tape underneath to stop the resin from seeping through there. If it floods over on these sides a tiny bit, that's gonna look cool because it's gonna be nice and shiny. And also, if it doesn't, I'm just going to poly this at the end. I don't know if I'm going to stain the table or I'm just going to leave it at its natural color and then just poly it at the end. Because I want it to have like a nice finish and like, obviously I have to like sand off 
some of the stuff. And I already started sanding off like some of the other logos and stuff around the table. Oh yeah, and we still have to put like the little supports under here. Get the legs from bowing out. But yeah, overall it looks awesome. And I'm gonna start doing the bottle caps. Then I wanna do like an ombre. Like start with red and then at the end it'll be black on that side. Adding the bottle caps was one of my favorite parts of the process, but it was definitely one of the most time consuming. I wanted it to look a certain way without having a bunch of repeated bottle caps. In doing this table, I used up almost all of the bottle caps that I had collected for around three to four years, and in total it was somewhere around 1,400 bottle caps. Pouring the resin was definitely the most stressful part of the process for me because I had never worked with resin before. You have to pour completely equal portions of part A and part B or the resin won't fully cure properly. When I received the resin, I put both containers up to one another and they looked exactly equal. So since I was using the whole gallon of resin, I poured both of them in and just hoped for the best. The instructions clearly stated to pour the hardener first or else the resin won't ever fully mix, so that's what I did. When you receive the bottles, they are fully transparent in their separate containers, but once they come in contact with one another, they turn a cloudy color. So you gotta mix until it's fully transparent again, which for me took about seven minutes with a full gallon. Make sure you have a heat gun, hair dryer, or a torch to pop any bubbles that appear when pouring the resin, and that the pouring is done in a dust and debris free area, as both will be very obvious in your finished product. Okay, now we're ready for the best part. I just mixed the resin for like seven minutes. So sorry guys for um, not showing me pouring the resin. It was super stressful once I actually got to it because I went against gluing down all the bottle caps on the table because somebody said since they're so stacked on top of each other, only like a handful of them will try and float and you can just push them down with a pin. So that's what I did and almost immediately all of the bottle caps tried to raise up on the table, so I was literally down here for like two hours with a pin just trying to push all the bottle caps down. And then as I was done with the pin, I went down with um, a heat gun and popped all the bubbles on the table. I'll show you the heat gun. It's the one that my twin sister uses to shrink wrap all her soaps. But it didn't turn out, like I wanted it to flood over the bottle caps themselves and it's kind of like you can see little divots and like it didn't go fully over each bottle cap but it actually looks pretty cool what i'm gonna do right now is poly it Something I forgot to discuss was the triangles at either end of the table. We were originally planning on doing bottle cap triangles, but I had so much decorative wood left over and thought it would be much better looking, as well as giving an even playing surface. We started with the proper measurement for 10 cup pong and used that to draw a stencil on each piece of cardboard and cut it out. Using this stencil, we drew the proper shape onto our extra wood and then cut each piece individually. After this, we assembled each triangle and wood glued them to the table, securing them with a nail gun. This is literally so pretty. Let me do this. So I've been like starting by like flooding it, and then um, I found that going like really easy on it creates less bubbles. And then also at the end, like I'll go over it nice and slow, try and get rid of any of the other bubbles left. The polyurethane that I'm using for this part of the project is clear satin because I didn't want everything to be as blazingly shiny as it was with the resin. So if I used like a high gloss polyurethane, everything would have been super shiny, but I still wanted it to be waterproof because when you're playing beer pong, it's always going to be exposed to water almost all the time. So I'm probably going to do like three or four layers of this clear satin poly. So, we are headed to Home Depot. I'm gonna look 
for some wood conditioner because I decided that I want to stain the framing wood because I put poly on the decorative wood and it was like super dark and then I did like a test poly on our supports that we're gonna put on the table and it was way too light like it would just clash extremely bad so we're gonna head over to either Home Depot or Lowe's they're literally 30 seconds away from each other and we're gonna get some wood conditioner and then some stain I'm thinking like chestnut color something close enough that it it, it kind of matches the other colors but it still has a bit of difference i think i'm gonna go a little bit lighter than the decorative wood colors but also so it doesn't clash so this is all the new stuff that i got from home depot like 20 minutes ago here's the pre-stained wood conditioner this was about 13 dollars for the whole container it's so that when i put this stain on this wood it won't have a bunch of like super dark spots and super light spots it's so that it um, soaks in all evenly. Then I got this wood stain, special walnut, just so that, because like as you can see here, this is super contrasty from the detailing wood, so I want to create unity within the table. This was only like eight or nine dollars. And then we got our polyurethane. I got clear satin to match the clear satin that I already put on the uh, detailing wood and then of course I got masking tape to line all these edges so that when I stain it doesn't stain any of the already um, stained and polyed wood. One of the things I forgot to mention was see this black strip all around the table. Immediately after we did the framing of the table, I went on Amazon and I bought like a $20 strip of 20 foot LEDs and I lined the entire table with these LEDs. So here's the excess. Get in the lights so you can see it. Here's the excess LEDs and you just cut along that cut line with a pair of scissors and you can trim it to whatever length. So I did that and then before pouring the resin we drilled a hole in here and the cable just comes out the bottom and like here's like the silver tape and everything, the foil tape that we used to make sure the resin didn't pour through. For $20 it comes with this remote Check that out. It adds like so much style to it for only 20 bucks. But now I'm going to condition the wood and then stain it. The instructions of the wood conditioner stated to apply liberally with a brush and allow it to sit for one to five minutes before wiping off the excess in order to allow it to soak in properly. Since this was a pine table, I waited the full five minutes. After wiping off the excess, I waited 15 minutes before applying the stain. I did not want to do it immediately after wiping off the wood conditioner to allow any excess that I had missed to soak in, but I also knew that I was supposed to stain within two hours of using the wood conditioner. The reason for this being that if you wait too long, the wood conditioner will dry out and it will be as if you never applied it, and the stain will end up looking very uneven. On to the staining. I started the first coat with a paper towel which applied the stain much thinner than I had anticipated. After going over the table with the stain, I removed the excess with a clean paper towel. And seeing that the stain was slightly uneven and lighter than I would have liked, I went around a second time. This time with a paintbrush and applied it much more generously than before. Once it was done, I wiped the excess off again. 
Leaving the excess on for too long or allowing it to dry on the table without removing can cause it to be clumpy, way too dark, and look very unnatural. After two coats, I was content with the way it looked, so I removed the masking tape and used a little paintbrush to apply stain onto the little cracks and crevices that I had missed. I then waited 24 hours to apply the first coat of poly. So, just finished. Looks so much better now. So all that we have left to do is sand poly off of this, stain it, then put these on as supports. And then just tomorrow after work, I'm going to poly this and this again. Cut the legs down a size. Then we should be all good to go. So I did the test stain on all three of these supports for some stupid reason, so I have to sand it all off before I can stain it and then re-poly it. <laughs> too short so now what we have to do is attach these um, piece of wood to make it um, like stabilizers or whatever Okay, this table 
has been a pain in the butt, but it looks amazing. It's ready to be cleaned. So as you guys can see, I bought more resin. Um, I actually decided that I wanted to fill the table all the way to the top and flood the entire surface of the table. So I went and bought two more gallons of resin and we're going to flood the entire table. Huh? Yeah, hurt yourself. I mean, if I did it like this all the time, This is so cool. I want the cool little ping pong table ever. When we get so fat, you couldn't see the rest of them. That would be amazing. Why? It was hard, right? <laughs> Don't touch that girl! So I know it needs a lot, like in the middle. <laughs> 